¿Qué quieres hacer? No. ¿No qué pues, mijo? A ver, hijo, hazme, hazme unos ojitos, hazme unos ojitos, hazme unos ojitos. Ay, güey. Hazme esos ojitos. All right. Uh, looks like we're nearing the end of the stream time, so let me annihilate these fools. Into it. Kill. Kill. Fear me. That's it for the stream, you guys. Like I said, this game is this game's fun. It's like Skyrim. It could be like Skyrim. I just wished it worked. I think this game serves as a good, good old metaphor for everything right now. It's something that we were promised that was told it was going to be cool, and then it was totally, totally lame and broken when it came out. Lame and broken, like everything around us, like our healthcare system. Like our democracy. What else is broken? It's all... I, I wished it all worked better. I really do. But while... While it's... Getting worked on and getting fixed, I'm gonna be as weird as possible. <laughs> Woo! Alright. Time to take this off. Scyther! 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 When I think about describing myself, or when somebody asks me to describe myself, I can't help but think of the opening verse to The Boxer, the song by Simon and Garfunkel. I feel like in writing about himself, Paul Simon also wrote about me, back in 1968, 25 years before I was born. I don't know how many of these lame-ass personal statements have epigraphs, but here you go. I'm just a poor boy, though my story seldom told. I have squandered my resistance for a pocket full of mumbles, such are promises. All lies and jest, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. I should probably delete lame ass. <laughs> You have to understand, my default settings make me believe that I burden people, annoy them. I naturally don't think I have much to offer as a person. 
Whatever confidence or charisma I exhibit for the most part is not who I am. Those are all just tools I know how to use well from time to time. One of these times is when I'm on stage. I enter a space and I try and part the clouds solely by being myself, by saying what I think and feel, all the good things, all the bad things, all the silly things. In those brief moments, I am whole. I embrace who I am and make peace with myself, all of myself. The depressive, the showman, they all have something to offer. And if that's the case, then so do I. So for everyone that hasn't been in the green room, this is the exit, don't go over there. Uh, this is the entrance. Entrance and exit. Shh, there's a lot of comedians in there. We're about to go inside. Shh. You know that one, have you seen the green room on HBO? No. Then look it up. Look I don't it up. know what you're talking about. Hi, the cooter. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me see. I'm a Gino with quarters because I'm on, I'm on a budget. Look who I found. Hello. Hello. That's it. I, I went the other way. Pull the door. That's my five. Oh, what the chat. fuck? <laughs> 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 you know? God damn. If you got your laundry, dude, Expect now you got your quarters. Absolutely, man. I would be worried if I didn't get this from Liz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just made your trip, grandma's trip to Coinstar very depressing, all right? <laughs> no, that was only like five. She has like a hundred dollars worth of quarters. That helped me start up my stand-up career because I took it and all Wait, the, the gas I had to pay with. Huh? The jar? Yeah. So you've been, you've been so dipping in this jar for a while. <laughs> No, my grandma's jar. Like, that's her jar. I know, you've been, this is, this is your... This is fucking taken and taken. Oh, and she and, just keeps adding. Bro, there was like, at least like a hundred and like fifty dollars. Who has a tattoo now? How big is this fucking jar? It's a big jar. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how many fucking quarters. Why you... uh, four coins is a dollar. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it ends with screen. like... He like wasn't even eight and a child. Like That's how everything he ends, though. Know what happened. It's eight and a child. I didn't know what happened, bro. <laughs> there so there much shit happened. That's the problem. Yeah, you want to know why? Because you're dumb. That's rude, Forrest, rude. What? How's that good reference? You know, if the pandemic had never happened, I wouldn't have everything I have now. I wouldn't have 200,000 followers. I'd be burning out on stage. I'd be going out every night, still have a shitty job, and just overall shit out of luck. I'm sure I'd be desperately looking for another job while taking all the odd ones I could find. Asking only workman's wages. Like I'm looking for a job, but I get no offers. It's a precarious way of living, not ideal in any sense. I remember taking this odd job. This one wasn't so bad. I'm not sleeping in the No problem. Or was the commute? It wasn't that bad. Getting here from uh, from Garden Grove to Long Beach is uh, takes like 20 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes somewhere around here. Is that your camera? Yeah. How, this how is old the one. Is it and tell me about it. This is a, a Canon C100. Uh huh. Uh, it's a Mark One. Uh huh. I bought it when I was in film school. Uh huh. I should have bought textbooks with it because I used financial aid money to buy this. You should have bought what? I should have bought textbooks with this, but instead I bought this. Well, that's not so bad. No, yeah, it's a, it's a great investment. This guy right here is Patrick Booker. He is a venerable comedian, and he was one of the hosts of my favorite open mics, World Cup Cafe in Long Beach, California. Patrick also owns a tile business. Before the pandemic, I made a promotional video for Patrick's business, and this is what I got. So how I made a living for 91 until basically 2009 was I signed up with temp agencies. Yeah. And I 
presented myself as an accountant, a finance guy, yeah. and lo and behold, if they didn't just send me out like that, and I would just fake shit until yeah. I was either discovered and got whacked, <laughs> or I, you know the game. Yeah. But I never liked that shit. Yeah. Fucking never liked it. What made this promotional video special, though, was that Patrick wasn't looking to create something super professional. He was actually looking to make something that was funny, laid back, full of jokes, something that didn't take itself so serious, much like the man who commissioned it. I'm not a big fan of promotional videos, but I jumped at the opportunity to make a sort of parody of one, one that would be a legitimate advertisement. So behold, mortals, the fruit of our labor. Here. Yeah, I'll do some work because I, I had pen, pens and stuff. Yeah, I'm Patrick uh, with Patricio Tile. I'm the uh, front man, uh, Mick Jagger, if you will, uh, for you young kids. Uh, Google Mick Jagger. Come on, come on and see our 10,000 square foot warehouse where we warehouse all these Mexican products that are so popular. We're always looking for that Spanish Mediterranean look, but we want you to know they're in stock and ready to ship. We started off, again, 14 years ago uh, with Talavera, Talavera Tile, uh, which is a tile originally from Talavera, Spain, and its origins go way... Sorry, I'm going to speed through this. This is rather long. Uh, if any of you want me to make a sort of parody advertisement, you can always DM me. I'll stop it right You've here. seen our traditional Talavera. Along with the traditional Talavera, we have another uh, collection that we sub-divide, uh, or uh, is this, is this, is this, what's the word? A subset, no. Sub Subcategory. Oh, there you go. So we also have another thing within the Talavera called the Puro Talavera. <laughs> Sorry again. Uh, let's just skip to the very end. But again, these tiles need to be sealed and maintain over its lifetime. It's not uh, very complicated. Sometimes they only have to be cleaned every 10 years, but they definitely have to be sealed before installation uh, to walk on and you know all that stuff. What do you think, Daniel? It's pretty good. I think so. Pretty good. I think it's okay if you can just kind of clean up whatever best yeah. content I have. I'm going to give you these. Uh, I'm very talented, but the one thing I've always sucked at is making money. Thank God for people like Patrick who are there to help idiots like me. I'm going to be doing odd jobs my whole life. I read business books non stop because you know I just have to feed you know how it is you got to feed yeah. your head full of shit because I'm kind of a you know what I mean? I need that knowledge. Yeah. And so I just read recently where uh, it's a time management one. And that would be good for you too. Is that when you're doing things like this, just fucking do it. It doesn't have to be an A plus. You know, if it's a C, that's good enough at that time. I mean, you want it the best you can. Yeah. But if you sit around and fucking analyze everything, it's never going to happen. Yeah. And so the point is, I'm glad that you, you stayed on this date and I did. Just fucking get it done. Yeah. Here's your fucking PK, and hopefully there's enough information for these dumb fuckers. <laughs> you, you put that in there. Like, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it. Yeah. What do you think? Stop. Sort of shock and awe was probably the first reaction. When Elon Musk tweets, the world listens. This is just the world's biggest casino. Hedge fund titans have lost an estimated $5 billion. There's very little the rich can do to stop us from eating them. The system was being gamed. There's no doubt about that. We have never seen individual investors come together like that for a movement like this. People who started all this knew what they were doing. There's clearly a financial revolution happening right now. It was about taking money from rich, fat, stupid hedge funds. <laughs> Frozen trading completely. The system seems rigged. This is, this is kind of shocking. People <laughs> love <laughs> For 28 years, I've been living like a fucking monk. I don't know how this has happened. 
Well, maybe having a devoutly Catholic mother has something to do with it. I think she told me one day when I was little she wanted me to be a priest. My mother told me a lot of things I thought I ignored. What a boring, restrictive life to wish on your child. And yet here I am, her little Cenobite. I'm not a priest, but I'm starting to think I was one. In a past life, if those actually exist. I bet I was a good little Jesuit. I bet I lived around the time Galileo Galilei did. And I bet you I was horrified when they tried him for telling the truth. That's where it started, I bet. That's when the faith shattered. Uh-huh. What else is on? No flipping! Now, I don't know if you caught that, but that last bit was code for... If you want to get off, this is your last stop. Because it's going to be like this until probably the very end. So if you're down with it, I'll see you on the other side. But if you're not... Bye. No. Yep. Imagine, though, if she called you up late at night and talked to you for two hours and it was mostly apologizing for bothering you <laughs> so that it's just one more layer of frosting, which is just something that goes along with kind of a depressive temperament. So there's a, there's a lot of narcissism and self-hatred. How old are you today? I am 20. I was going to say 21. <laughs> I thought that was going to be 20. Yeah. That's so. How do you feel? About I feel great. I feel good. It's just a weird year. And 2020, it's a weird year. It's weird. Your birthday is matched up with the year. Oh, yeah. That's what I was 2020 and you're 9, 2019. Oh, yeah. He was born in 2000. He was born in 2000. He's. He's, uh, he's a I'm dragon. A I'm a Gen Z. A dragon, is that what they're called? Yeah, you're in the Chinese Zodiac, you're a dragon. Oh, okay, cool. How long? I've known you since you were like 16, huh? Yeah, so we've known each other for four years, kind yeah. of. Right? Four years. I want to say three years, but I think next year it'll be four years. Yeah. It's it's a, just a long time. We've known each other. I feel like it's like, it's weird because it's like, you know, and then not seeing you for such a long time is, is weird as well. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna see Ferris today. I kind of teared up a little bit. Aww. I swear, I was like, you little like, bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I also recorded yeah. you on your 18th birthday too. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, bro. I've seen. <laughs> uh, so today is October 18th. Yeah. And you, you're 18 today. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on being 18? I mean, I just, I just can't wait to like drive. Cause then I could like go everywhere to LA and Orange County and just do mics constantly. Okay, so you're 18, right? Yeah. 10 years from now, you're gonna be 28. Fuck. I'm 28. Where is 28 year old Luis G? Is this like, like real? Like? Yeah, this is real, bro. I hope you're not doing open mics still. I mean, it'd be cool, but like, you know, I hope you're like a good stand up comedian and. Just a good person. I got a present for you. I have a present for your 18th birthday. No way. Is yeah, it a I vape do. pen? <laughs> Here, let me get this out of my Oh, phone. it's a fucking. I know what it is. There Fuck yeah! There you go. Jeff Goldblum! It's your present. It's Jeff Goldblum. That little coin purse there, you forgot that uh, here on a leg day. I found it. So uh, it's Finders Keepers. I was gonna give it to Tyler because she's a big fan of Jeff Goldblum. But um, it's your birthday, man. I, I just decided to give you to give you a gift. So there it is. The thing that the thing that used to be yours but then was <laughs> mine is now yours again. Thanks, man. This costs like six bucks. Yeah. Why do you have to like buy this? You know? I didn't buy it. No, I know. I knew. this was three years ago, 2018 when I started recording shit for this vlog, web series, docu-series, whatever the fuck this is. Check it out, we got the main cast members right before I took top billing. I had no clue what the future had in store for me, for all of us. And as you can see here, I remember trying to predict it. So, what are we, what are we solving here today? Should I be part of mixed? <laughs> 
Ooh. Nope. <laughs> I was caught up in some bullshit back in 2018. Shit, I remember they sent me to Jamaica. What's up, people? Please forgive my sweaty face. I'm in Jamaica and it's hotter than a motherfucker. I'm in my hotel room right now. You guys wanna see my view? It's way too nice for my sweaty ass. Check this out. Ta-da. It's a little dark though, let me fix that. Yeah, I'm on. All right, let's get straight to the point here. On May 17th, I will be at the Rec Room in Huntington Beach. I will be a part of the Rec Room Presents show featuring Jay Larson. He's a funny dude. There's gonna be a bunch of other funny people there performing. I, I say this a million times. Do I ever do you wrong? No, these people are funny. Jay Larson's funny. So you should go out and see the show. One love. One heart, go buy your tickets and see Jay Larson. Hear the children laughing, one love. Hear the children laughing, one heart. Give thanks and praise to the Lord and go buy your tickets right now. Let's get together and buy some tickets. A little over six months into stand-up and I was already opening for Jay Larson. Shit, that same year, I opened for Cal Kinane. It was a sold-out show. What's up? How's it going? How's your day? Is it good? It's good and I'm glad to hear it. I am here to remind you that this Thursday at the Rec Room, I will be on a super cool show featuring Brian Moses and Kyle Kinane. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, buy them now. It's going to be an awesome show. If it hasn't sold out yet, it's going to sell out. So don't miss your opportunity to go and see this dope-ass show. Yay! All right. Love you. Bye. I had no business opening for these people, but goddamn was it fun. Some of the best nights of my life. Gotta take the good with the bad. I think that's what the cards always say. It ain't 2018 no more. Lots of ways of being a coward. I've been a coward in lots of ways. A coward is only the way I care about, motherfucker. Don't waste my time. No, I'm not going to be a coward. That's what I like to hear. supposed to make sense in this one. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm making perfect sense. I have something for you. You see? I'm not that bad. We're on the same team. Now you got Two birthdays to celebrate in January. What birthdays? Your birthday and the pitchforks.
You know, growing up in America in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, you were told that things gradually get better, that our lives and society improve as we go on, and that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But living through what we just lived through, almost a year and a half of it, I can't help but feel like we were lied to. It's demoralizing. For a while, I was starting to think, man, there probably isn't even an arc up there. That's probably the biggest lie of them all. But no, I think it's up there. I've come to the conclusion that I gotta be the one that goes up there and bends it. Y'all are more welcome to join me, if you want. I can't think it's all lost. There's still so much to protect. So much promise to live out, so much life to be had. There's still a place in the sun for everyone, even if that sun glows red from the ashes of imminent existential self-destruction. The cohorts before me offered my generation their lament, and pathetically, it seems that's all they're willing to give us. We can't be like them. We can't sell out the future. We can't afford more failure. Fuck our lament. Our children deserve solutions. I'm just stunned that even in the throes of catastrophe, everything is still so abysmal. And there are so many people that are intent on keeping it that way. Smoking big rolling. It's disgusting. Solo is hell on earth and the city's on fire. In hell, in hell, there's heaven. There's a bull and a matador dueling in the sky. In hell, in hell, there's heaven. Mackenzie Fernandez. I'm 21 and I'm a student at Cal State Long Beach. What do you study at Cal State Long Beach? Uh, theory and practice of cinema, the documentary track. How long have you been going to Cal State Long Beach? Mm, one year. It was my second year. What was your, uh, what, where did you go to before Cal State Long Beach and for how long? I went to Fullerton College for three years. How would you describe your time at Cal State Long Beach? Uh, I was just in here, in this room, on this chair. Uh, So you've been stuck in your room because of COVID, and you've been taking your classes online. Uh, How have your online classes been so far? Uh, They suck. (laughs) Being online is super awkward and staring into a camera and 
having your face there the whole time. Kind of like now, right? Yeah. And looking at other people's faces, it's weird. Do you feel like you're learning anything? Nope. Why do you, why, why don't you feel like you're learning anything? Because mm, I'm in here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I could just make movies on my own if I wanted to. I could just be doing this by myself. I don't need to be paying Cal State Long Beach to do it. What did you expect when you uh, transferred over to Long Beach? Mm, expected to be on campus and maybe join some of the clubs for it to be a lot more immersive and interactive just like a normal college experience and uh you have one year left at cal state long beach right mm -hmm. uh, what's that year gonna look like mm, i'm gonna have a few classes on campus i think this next semester and i think the rest are online and i don't know about spring semester so in general you're not a fan of this whole virtual learning thing nope the documentary track uh at a zoom meeting with my teacher my professor and she said usually it's like one whole year where you do like a proposal from in fall and then in spring you do like a big bigger documentary and I think now it's just like split into two semesters we're just doing what we can so it's like do you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick yeah I feel gypped <laughs> I feel like that'd be really cool to like do a bigger like longer documentary and have that experience do you think any of this is fair like obviously like nobody <laughs> could really see COVID coming do you I guess, I don't know how to phrase this question, like, do you think <laughs> Cal State Long Beach could have done a better job facilitating your education or the education that you expected from a, uh, I guess, a, a prestigious university? Because I think Cal State, Cal State Long Beach is a good school, right? That's what people say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they could have done anything different? I mean, no. I mean... I guess it's like just the government's fault overall, like if everyone had just stayed indoors and they could allow people to come back on campus, you know? Yeah. But because people don't want to wear masks or whatever, and we didn't have like an actual lockdown. I don't know. I think it's kind of out of their hands. It's kind of, yeah. Just as a young person, like how do you feel about, I guess, everything that's happened, um, and I guess where things are going in general. Like, how do you feel about the, the present and I guess the future? We're all fucked. <laughs> Why do you say that? Global warming's gonna drown us, except for the rich people. Mm. Yeah, and then poor people just get poor. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like exactly, but it's bad. Do you have, like, any hope for the future? Some, but <laughs> it feels like it's going to take a lot of, like, bloodshed or, like, dumb shit to get there. What do you want to happen, ideally, like, in the next five years? Bernie Sanders takes over and then we just follow his lead. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I oh, don't know shit. <laughs> He's just installed. I like the Q and honors are saying like Trump's gonna be made president again. Yeah, but we flip the script. We it, just do it Bernie it's, Sanders. It's Bernie Sanders. <laughs> we go radical left instead. Yeah. We wish. Mm -hmm. We wish. I think uh, things look dire and they look bleak, but oh, there's something that can always be done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. It's not like we're all gonna die, but they think we're screwed a little bit. <laughs> ah, bless the children. Say it a little bit louder.
and see the most beautiful sight any man, straight or gay, that's in parentheses, <laughs> could wish for. Wow, is all I can say as I look upon my girl all dolled up. She is dressed to a T. <laughs> a beautiful flowered sundress with a skirt hemmed high enough that, with the skirt hemmed high enough that she even attempted to walk, you'd see her paradise. <laughs> You guys know what that is. Yeah. Okay. All right. For those of you who are always wondering why I'm always taking pictures or filming things, this is a reason why. Her hair, her hair is just fall short of her. This is how I wrote it too. This is literally how I wrote it. Her hair is just fall short of her del- delicious caramel color shoulder. What's good, y'all? Hey, I'm Kenny Brown. Uh, I'm on a It's an Adventure podcast with Daniel and Victor. Or is it Victor and Daniel? Either way, you should listen to it. It's an awesome, awesome show. You'll get to hear my uh, my beautiful story of a more... I can't roll my R's. Uh, Stitcher Pro. Get Stitcher Pro, Cam. We're not, <laughs> we're not sponsored by Stitcher. Never mind. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Hey guys, um, sorry, I got a new camera and uh, I hope it's working well, it's not shaky, um, so let's try this out. Um, so I wanted to talk about Kartik since I haven't updated in a really long time and I know there's people out there that, um, some of my subscribers that are it's like, what's going on with NASA, I haven't heard of her. Well, I'm here two months post CAR-T cell therapy was hospitalized they put a pick line all the shebang i was there for a couple days and i was feeling fine they told me i have to feel sick um that way they know it's working and it's attacking um the cancer so finally i think it was like day five where um it hit me it was bad fevers night sweats 103, 104 fevers. Um, I I don't remember one week. I was so out of it. I got out of the hospital. I got an appointment date and I went to go see my doctor for a PET scan to make sure, to see what's going on, if it shrunk or not, if it's still, you know, there. So uh, I received the results for the PET scan and it shows that I'm in remission. Um, I was so nervous in that room with the doctor and I didn't even want to look at the PET scan before she said I was in remission. I was like panicking before she showed me the PET scan. So she then said, oh, you're in remission, you know, you should be happy. And I was one of the lucky ones that went into remission and, um, uh, yeah. So that's the good news. I'm in remission. This YouTube channel motivates me to do good things and explore the world. And I want to make a series of, a, you know, what it's like to be a cancer survivor. And that life goes on and it could be normal. You know, you have a new normal. So I'm very happy that I get to be myself again in a way um talk to you guys later hello there everybody um i'm wondering if any of you generous people out there can do me a favor my uh, friend recently passed away of covid 19. When the pandemic started, we were told to expect the worst, to expect casualties. My friends, Kenny and Ness, are gone. Victims of a moment in history. A pair of statistics. How fucking stupid is that? The way I see the pandemic, I see it in the form of two metaphors. The first metaphor... We're all standing out 
in an open field, spaced out but in clusters. Uh, around us are the people that we love, the people that we're close to, our friends and family. And above all of us, lording above all of us, is the Grim Reaper. And he's indiscriminately letting his scythe drop onto the ground. And every time he drops his scythe, he drops it on someone. I feel like that's what the whole of 2020 felt like. And uh, while he's dropping his scythe, you're just thinking in your head, man, I hope this shit doesn't hit me. And I hope it doesn't hit anybody that's around me. But in August of 2020, boom, that scythe came down and hit my friend Kenny Brown. And in February of 2021, that scythe came down again and hit my friend Ness. And I felt those hits. They were rather close to me. The second metaphor, uh, the pandemic is a giant flood. And when it started, everyone tried to get to higher ground to escape the flood. And everybody that had the resources and the means were able to. They were able to get to safety. Uh, I was able to get to safety. I was able to find myself a little perch, but my perch wasn't really high up. And I was able to see people get swept away. I know I have to come to peace with the debts of my friends. And I know I should carry on their memory in a way that's dignified and positive but there's still a part of me that's rather angry because it wasn't their fault somebody let the door wide open and let the grim reaper waltz right in somebody let the dam break i still kind of expect to see them at some open mic, hanging out in the back, watching them walk into the library, me all smiles, delighted that they're there. They were my age, full of potential. My friends should still be here. And that's something that's going to be hard to let go. I didn't get in. I'm waitlisted. I'm. I, they put me on the waitlist for fall 2021. But they said I was one of the more talented applicants in this year's pool. Why am I waitlisted? You were waitlisted, but you've been accepted. No, waitlisted isn't the same thing as as being accepted. If if I were accepted, they would have started the email with, "Dear Daniel, congratulations, you've been admitted." But I'm waitlisted. I gotta. I gotta hope that somebody declines their offer in order for me to go. Who's gonna decline their offer? Nobody! I didn't get in! Asshole. Why don't you try reading the entire email? If we are unable to admit you off the wait list for the fall 2021 semester, we will offer you admission to our spring 22 class. Oh. I did get in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was expecting the congratulations or something. I don't know. I just I just read the first paragraph and then the rest of the email. I, I didn't even look at that fucking sentence. My mind was just so focused on the negative. I'm a fucking idiot, bro. True. No. Vas a caer, cabrón. ¿De cuánto te va a regañar? ¿Qué es eso, mijo?
You know, I didn't ask to be here. I think I was really comfortable when I was nothing at all. And I can go back to being nothing at all whenever I want, but that'd be such a waste. I have gifts. I gotta share them with people. I, I gotta use them. I gotta use them on you. I've learned a lot in my life, but the people that have taught me the most are all of you. The people that have uh, used me and the ones around me, the men and women behind the curtain. I know you guys would rather not teach people like me, but you are so cute. What are you doing? What are you doing? I know you'd rather not teach people like me. You'd rather see me buried. Well, good luck with that. I hate to admit it, but my ultimate motivator has always been spite. The most valuable thing you guys have ever taught me is that if you say something enough times with enough confidence and you have enough people who believe it and enough people who are willing to toe the line, reality can be whatever the fuck you want it to be. Truth can be whatever you say is the truth. What power. I want to try. You see, my mice. You see, all I do every day is listen to songs with the words higher and fire in them. It's where I want to take you. And it's what I'm going to do to you. Come here, puppy. Come here, baby. Come here. Who's my puppy? Who's my puppy? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is that real? No, it's henna. They said it'd be gone in two weeks, but I've had it for four years. <laughs> I've done something new for this fight. I'd unwrassled with an alligator. That's right, I'd unwrassled with an alligator. I'd untussled with a wave. I done handcuff lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Everyone who's in the know says that's exactly how it goes. Anything good about me? I'm the only one who knows. It's like, of course, people were gonna tune out and say, I don't trust you. You're smug elite pricks, and I don't trust you. I trust this fucking two bit con man, real estate goon, reality star over you. That speaks poorly of everybody. That speaks poorly of absolutely everybody. So, there's blame to go all around here. You blame Trump for lying, you blame the people who were duped for being duped, and you blame the media for not having any- people don't have trust in you anymore, so when you tried to rebut it, people weren't listening. But listen, this does go to show you roughly the percentage that's TFG. You know, it's like 50% of Republican voters. Now, I'm optimistic in that that other 50%, some of them are gettable. And so, if you materially improve their life, if you argue to materially improve their life, if you run on those things, you might be able to win some of them back. What a long face. I'm never going to get out of here. I'm always going to be stuck. Trapped. In this room. In this house. Waiting for my life to start. You're silly. Nope. I'm hopeless. Nope. You're silly. I go out there to be silly. There are no places to be silly. Yes, there is. Don't you know? It's bad.
the castle of memories I got nothing but throwbacks. Remixes of past ruminations. Here's one. For those of you who don't know about On the Road, I'm sure you've read parts of the book somewhere. Some quotes, some passages here and there. Perhaps on Instagram or that Tumblr you had when you were 17. You might have read a passage that goes a little something like this. The only people for me are the mad ones. The ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time. The ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles, exploding like spiders across the stars, and in the middle you see the blue center light pop, and everybody goes off. Ah. I was worried that if the quarantine were to continue, I'd go mad. Didn't take long for me to realize though, I was already mad. I went delightfully insane way before COVID-19. I think I came out of the womb like that. Maybe that's why I surround myself around all these freaks. Birds of a feather flocking to the little pockets in our towns where our ceremonies held in the name of the very first amendment are performed. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm so glad it's back. That was really funny. Come on, man. I thought you'd be out there. Oh no, I'm going out there. I just got a few things to finish. Just this thing and one more thing and then it's the off season. So you I feel like my life is pending. Like it's been pending for 28 years. I don't feel like anything, anything that I'm doing is official. And I'm tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. I don't know. What else do you have to say? Hello, 21st century. I'm one of your great minds. Aw, that's cute. What's the mission? What's the plan? The plan is to, while I'm here, Make them laugh and make them think. And when I'm gone, make them cry forever after. I see. How do you feel? I feel like I lost something. Like I, like I missed something. And if I'm, if I haven't run out of time to catch it already, I'm going to real soon. You're repeating yourself. I'm just kind of tired. <laughs> I'm tired of things just being on the horizon and never reaching it.
but it's late. And I think you should play my song. Play my jukebox. Play my song, you motherfucker. Well, that's not very nice. I don't really feel like playing your song. Do you deserve to hear your song? I'm not some kind of fucking Alexa that you can just order around. Just play my song. So we can both rest. I am just a poor boy, though my story seldom told. I have squandered my resistance for a pocket full of mumbles, such are promises. All lies and jest, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. When I left my home and my family I was no more than a boy In the company of strangers In the quiet of the railway station Running scared Laying low, seeking out the poorer quarters Where the ragged people go Looking for the places only they would know Lie, la, lie Lila la 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 Asking only workman's wages I come looking for a job But I get no offers Just to come on from the whores on 7th Avenue I do declare there were times when I was so lonesome I took some comfort there La 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 Then I'm laying out my winter clothes And wishing I was gone Going home For the New York City winters are bleeding me Bleeding me Boxer and a fighter by his trade, and he carries the reminders of every glove that laid him down or cut him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom telling me when she found out she was pregnant with me. She hoped I'd be a girl. That didn't pan out, of course, but she didn't mind. Out came another baby boy, one she couldn't help but stare and smile at. I catch her doing that sometimes, and when I was younger, it used to make me mad. After time was able to wring out most of the anger from me, I was able to understand why she'd look at me like that. It was something she mentioned to me when talking about a picture of me she posted on Facebook. One of her friends commented, Tiene cara de niño Dios, which roughly translates to, he has a baby Jesus face. No, I wasn't the girl my mom prayed for. Instead, the Lord gave her the next best thing, a son who looked like the saints who adorned her candles, fixed with halos, bathed in light, flanked by hymns and scriptures. I'm sure my mother feels this way about all her children. I think it's what strengthens her faith. She's been blessed by the countenances of her daughter, her sons, her grandchildren, and she must think, how can I not believe in God when he has surrounded me with such angels? The people who came up with the idea of God must have been geniuses, the first philosophers and storytellers just trying to make sense of the world. I used to rail against God, but now when people ask me if I believe in him, or her, I say, sometimes. Mostly when moments are dire, when my gas tank is on E and I'm 20 minutes away from home, when the keepers of copyright spare my work, when checks and balances hold and democracy is safeguarded, when the pining and yearning is much too deep, when I get a brief glimpse of the mountaintop, when my dogs die, and on a good day, 
when I catch my reflection. La 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 la